Hello YouTube So today I'm gonna give you a review or feedback about my new brand new motorcycle Yosung GD250R But before everything I start if you're looking for a test ride or top speed video just cut the video right now and you already see that video available on YouTube but if you wanna see my feedback and my review as a owner of this motorcycle please keep on and go ahead with me and watch the video until the end so first I'm gonna tell you why did I buy a Yosong 250R my story started from I really wanted to have a good looking bike but I couldn't afford a six or seven thousand dollars motorcycle so i decided to buy something affordable at the top like at, at the most i couldn't even think thinking about paying more than three thousand dollars for a bike so i decided to purchase a chinese motorcycle i went on the website and i saw some actually pretty good looking motorcycles but none of them possibly can go um, more than 70 miles per hour on the freeway which is okay you can use them in some emergency cases to when you have to take the freeway for like five minutes for like passing two exits but not more than that it was enough for me so I ordered one I ordered a it's called Apollo um, if I'm not wrong, the exact name is Apollo DR47 and Bishan also makes that dual sport motorcycle. I'm not talking about Bishan Bras. No, it's, it's the same engine, but it looks better than Bishan Bras as a dual sport. So I ordered that motorcycle from Go-Kart Pre. Please pay attention to this part. I ordered it from Go-Kart USA. And I had a super, super terrible experience with them. Um, I basically uh, waited for the order to get the shipping, technically, um, information number. And they did not give me anything. Like after nine days, or I would correct that, after 12 days, uh, uh, I sent like two emails, one claim, and I was like, where is my motorcycle? You told me that's going to be um, in here like in four days. Um, I gave you like a week and now almost two weeks. They said, we're going to cancel your order because we don't have it in stock. Just imagine it took them 10 days just to tell me that they don't have that motorcycle after I paid for the motorcycle. And again, another week to refund my money. And they did not refund my shipping price because I paid $190 because I live in Texas um, to just uh, basically refund the cost of the motorcycle. Sorry to talking about a lot about the um, Chinese motorcycles, but the point I'm talking about the Chinese motorcycle is because I paid the same price of that Chinese motorcycle, which was $2,000, at exact same to this Yosung. That was the point that I talked about it. Yes, this motorcycle usually brand new cost $3,000 or $3,200 almost uh, with everything like um, MSRP, I don't know, all the fees, all the hidden fees, like shipping title. And now I bought a motorcycle only 20 miles on it from a nice lady. Uh, just for two thousand dollars and i am so glad that i made the decision and i was lucky to get this bike okay let's start with the bike to be honest that was just like something nice happened to me that they um basically didn't ship that garbage chinese motorcycle to me because this motorcycle just imagine this one goes 100 miles an hour top speed and comfortably comfortably 80 miles per hour on freeway for you can do it like for at least a couple of hours and I did it and I had no problem right now I have like 100 miles on it again almost brand new but I have very much comfortable experience on the freeway 
Yes, speaking of freeway, this motorcycle is good for freeway. Even then, your song, if you go on the website, uh, they admit that this is a this is a road motorcycle. This is not a street motorcycle. If you see the ground clearance, the way it's designed, it's totally designed for truck, for road, for freeway, and nothing looks like for city or street. Yes, that's a part of the problem. To be honest, I love it. It looks so awesome. Just imagine, let's say not even two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars. It still looks awesome, and it goes fast. It's only two hundred fifty cc fuel injected. There's no carburetor, so it means that you're actually dealing with a modern motorcycle. And yes, we have only one disc brake, like one side disc brake on the front, but it works and stops the motorcycle perfectly and on, again well obviously one more on the rear because you can't have two uh, as long as I know and yeah the quality of the motorcycle I'm just showing it that's why I call this video in detail something in detail um, the quality of the motorcycle when you basically sit on it you don't feel like you're riding something cheap not at all this motorcycle is pretty modern looking fully digital display it shows you the gear indicator from one to neutral to gear six yes six gear and yeah I have hundred miles almost on it fuel level and also uh, temperature of the engine another point if you buy the GT model GT model yes it got a better I, would, I wouldn't call it a better look I'll call it bigger look, slightly bigger, two cylinders, still 250cc, but the older technology. And GT is air cooled, which this one is water cooled. And the radiator is here. Hopefully, be able to show it to you. Yeah, you see the radiator in here. So, this is water cooled and GT. So, I'm gonna start talking about how it feels like when you ride it on the freeway. Yeah, I don't want to make a video with that buzziness with the camera on my head driving, riding the bike and tell you how it feels like because I ride it already and I know now I can more concentrate on what I'm talking about, at least compared to when I'm riding. So I'm telling you, this bike is, is awesome. So, but doesn't mean everything is perfect. Just like other competitors like Ninja, 250 or Honda CBR 250 the position of the rider is a lot more aggressive and uncomfortable to compare to dual sports or maybe cruisers or touring bikes obviously yes it got water cooled and like I said it's great for freeway a couple hours being on freeway and everything feel confident about it but it's just this bike it is just like really feel like you are dealing with a bike that is designed only for truck only for freeway not comfortable for everyday long distance riding if i put it this way that's a feeling i get from it yeah that's why some of lots of ninja 250 buyers feel like they love their bikes but it is not a cruiser it's not that comfortable and uh comfortable again doesn't mean that it is not comfortable actually sit is high quality and comfortable but just the position you're like too much leaning on the front and it's just like abnormal unusual for a person who wants to feel and see themselves comfortable for a long distance again but in general there's no complaint because to compare to how much I paid for this bike I'm getting so much out of it I love it I'm loving it it looks so cool everything is on that place that it's supposed to be and it looks just so awesome so something else uh, because I'm all the time complaining about the, uh, some of the BMW motorcycle reliability and how expensive they are to repair 
And this one, the first problem I had with it, speaking of reliability, was totally my fault. So I pressed the rod shifter like super hard and I broke this part, right? I broke it and uh, kind of frustrating the brand new bike, you know, zero mile on it and you do something, you, you ruin it. I was scared. I was like, how much I should pay for this rod? This is the shifter, this is the transmission in here, right? So immediately I, you know, we went to the dealership and it was actually a Exterman, called Exterman dealership in Houston, Texas. And they were actually pretty kind and they gave me a, a used one for only 15 bucks. And I came home and I replaced it. I'm not even a handyman, it's just super simple to replace it. So I'm just gonna tell you something else to understand that how simple this motorcycle is. Or maybe mm, as much as the competitors, if not more. I did the old change myself because this bike has been in the garage since 2017 and nobody was touching it. Definitely, you need to replace the oil. So I did it myself. Here is the plug. All I did was just opening it, opening it, drain the oil in here, and uh, you should do it when your engine is hot because you're supposed to use the mm, type of oil, it's called 10W40. I use the Mobile One brand, motorcycle specialized, uh, and it has a high viscosity, so you gotta do it when the engine is hot to drain mm, as much as you can. So you do that, you uh, tie the oil pan plug again on the other side that I just showed you, and you refill it in here, it's super simple. And that's all you need to do. You put 1.3 quarters. If you replace the oil filter, which is here, but I didn't for the first time. And if you don't replace oil filter, 1.1 would be enough. 1.1 quarts of 10W40. Okay. It just took me like 10 minutes to replace this and 15 minutes to do oil change. All right, you, know, you don't have to go to the dealership to do simple stuff like this. Plus, since I don't have warranty on this motorcycle, like I said, I got it from a person. Uh, so the warranty would not transfer, transfer to the second owner, basically. So everything looks fine. I mean, this bike is not that super quick or fast. Like I said, top speed is around 100 miles or 95 or 100. Some videos shows like 105, but I don't know, almost that range, and 0 to 60 is 5.5 uh, to 6 seconds, and then that's all. But the ability and the confidence it gives you on the corners when you're turning is awesome. It's just like a super support bike that uh, you, can, you can totally comfortably do whatever you want with it. I don't do wheelies because I'm not that professional and I haven't seen any video that they can do that except the guy in Turkey, I don't know, he was just doing it for like 3 seconds, probably it's not that powerful. Oh, speaking of power and the feels that you get from it, I'm gonna add this too. Yes, it's 250 and I gave you, <coughs> excuse me, all the numbers, how it feels like uh, but the feeling that you get when you shift the gear is really really aggressive like trying to exaggerate the bike's feeling that gives to the rider you like for the first second is it like a 650 but it's not it's like got so much kick when you change the gears or downshift the gear basically the engine braking by itself is I would call it scary like it really works really great yeah I mean you can't get possibly anything better than this motorcycle on the planet right maybe if I knew more about motorcycles um, I would buy um, I don't know a dual sport but who can pay six or seven thousand dollars for the cheapest one so this is the only option right Plus, again, it just looks so awesome, and there's nothing wrong about the quality. So you have these two things. 
and going back to my reasons to buy a motorcycle like this. First of all, price is really good, affordable. And second, this is a motorcycle that you can hit the freeway for real. Like, not one of those Chinese 250s that they only go 70 miles per hour top speed. And top speed is not something that you basically can use all the time, not more than five seconds. But this goes 100 miles, means you can go comfortably, comes extremely comfortably, 70 miles per hour for hours, okay? And do not worry about the engine gets overheat because of water cooled. Yeah, so I'm gonna talk about the right now difference between GD and GT model. Okay, so G, this is a GD, okay? GD 250R and GT 250R. They have totally different engine, different sound, different feeling. GT is slightly bigger. This is more nimble and smaller. Same power. But because, because this is lighter, GT is lighter than GT, it goes 0 to 60 in 5.5, but GT goes in 7 seconds. Based on the tests, right? But the top speed on both of them are 100 miles. Like, I'm telling you again, between 95 to 105 miles an hour. Uh, depend on the weight of the rider or condition of the weather Okay, and This one has fully digital display and based on the reviews most of the people are Just admitting this GD is just a smarter design with obviously GT the motors technology is from 90 95 or something like that, but this one 2017, right? Everything is update, and right now I'm recording this video 2020, but trust me, nothing has been that much change in te in technology-wise in motorcycle world. So this is basically almost the newest thing ever. The only thing that I can complain about, which maybe I can't because of the price, yes I know, um, is the ABS that it doesn't have ABS. Okay. All right. Let me know if you have any question or comment, please, about this bike because I have it. I'm gonna make another video about test riding it. I'll tell you more about it. But if I see your comments and your questions, I would be answering them and considering them as in my next review, basically. By the way, <laughs> something that actually I am asking you guys, I couldn't even open this seat I couldn't even know how to how can I figure it out. <laughs> kind of stupid that I can't do that. Let me know if you know a trick about that. Thank you for watching and listening to me. Again, let me know if you have any question. See you next time.